There was a little bit of a furore when this work uh, was created, 1965. <laughs> the Royal Opera House uh, said they didn't want it. Well, I think the board took advice and it was felt that Mahler was perhaps not the appropriate composer for a ballet. Then I think it had never been one before. Is that right? I think that's true. I think there yeah. hadn't been yeah. a Mahler ballet before. And maybe um, people felt that it was a little sacred in a way. Um, it, do you know, it's funny. It might have been a very different ballet had Kenneth made it here. He made it in, in Stuttgart with dancers he knew and was very happy when he was there making it. It did come here. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, I was in the cast, yes, in 1966, yes. Grant, it's quite a departure, isn't it? The style of choreography, um, especially going from Romeo to, to this for Kenneth, it was, a, it was quite a new thing for him. How would you describe this, this sort of style that he uses in this piece? It's not classical, yeah, it but is. it has an earthiness to it, a, a, sort, of, a, a sort of a heaviness, or into the sort of feeling of into the floor. And, I mean, because of the, the, the Chinese poems, there, mm. there is a, a sort of There's a, a flavour of, of what Kenneth perceived as a sort of... Oriental. An Oriental, yeah. Asian sort, sort of, of style. An yeah. otherworldliness to it as well, isn't there? One, two, and three, down, four, and a one, two, three, down, four, releve, five, and hand, go, two, three... Well, let's talk about the music, Barry. Mm. Mahler. Uh, why Mahler? Well, why indeed? You see, I think that um, I think it's worth us all remembering that when this ballet was done, Mahler was not played in this country very much. Um, in fact, uh, it was only toward the end of the time that I was at school, which was about 1965. It was <laughs> not until then that the first Mahler, complete Mahler cycle was played, it was written, or Mahler started to conceive it in 1907, which was a dreadful year for him. Um, he had just finished the Eighth Symphony, which is the Symphony of a Thousand, one of the largest pieces mm. of music ever composed, certainly then, and, and even still is now to this, to this day. Um, and he was uh, v very uh, scared of doing the Ninth Symphony. I mean, the Song of the Earth is really his Ninth Symphony, but because Beethoven died very soon after, he wrote his Ninth Symphony, Mahler didn't want to do it. He eventually did write the Song of the Earth and then a Ninth Symphony. But what is extraordinary for me about the Song of the Earth is that it combines um, Mahler's wonderful lust for life, enjoyment of life, enthusiasm for life, with this overall feeling that it, he wasn't going to be around for much longer. And it's that which makes the symphony element. You know, we're always talking about in symphonies about the contrast between two very disparate elements. And it, of course, it's that, really, which, uh, which, which you feel in this and which the choreography um, it, it, it shows so well. If you play us the very beginning of the opening music, which, which, which is, all, which is a, it's a song about drink, you know, what should we do in life to enjoy ourselves? Oh, we'll have a jolly good drink. You know, and it's full of this sort of lusty uh, love of life. Can you just play us a bit of the music? Now, um, I'm sorry to stop you, it's so beautiful. But immediately when the tenor comes in, we're in that sort of a mood. But what happens? Mahler contrasts it with this extraordinary, tranquil, reflective melody. The words are, Dunkel ist das Leben ist der Tod, which means life is dark and so is death. And this, the music suddenly goes to this extraordinarily tranquil moment. comes the opening as if he just wants to get rid of that idea. But of course, what happens is that the piece goes on, that overwhelming feeling that, uh, of, of change, of life of, uh, coming to an end, gets more and more uh, present in the piece. 
Last question for you, Monica. What, what is it uh, that makes this work unquestionably a masterpiece in your eyes? I suppose the inventiveness, the unique quality, the unique uh, development of the choreography with this wonderful score. Um, I think Kenneth, you know, there, there are several ballets where Kenneth, Gloria is another one, Requiem is another one, where Kenneth had such a sense of uh, the shortness of our lives. You know, he was not afraid of the horrors of life, of its ugliness, um, and he just took it all on board. It was part of life. So love and lust and fun and living and tears mm. and great grief. Mm. Monica Mason, Grant Coyle, Barry Wordsworth, thank you very much. Indeed.